Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I have a real treat for you today. I've been to the thrift store again and I picked up another sewing machine. So I uh, have been saving it, haven't really looked at it yet. I uh, wanted to kind of go through this together with you guys and uh, see what we have on our hands today. So uh, let me open this up and I will show you. I bought this machine uh, purely on how cool it looked. And as you can see, it's pretty cool looking. So this is a white. Um, I believe it's a model 173. I did look it up on the internet. I tried to find what year white made this machine and there isn't a lot of information out there about it. I did pinpoint one thing to possibly it was made in 1963. So we're going to go with that 1963 model, but look at how cool it is. It, uh, I just love the, the blue and white, um, color scheme here and, uh, the white logo down the, the side here. And, uh, I'll just flip it around so you can get a really good look at this thing. Um, it is in incredible condition. Um, you know, I saw it in the store and I noticed right away that it didn't have any scratches, no marks on it. It's almost like it might have never really been used a whole bunch. So that's uh, pretty cool for something that's so old. So um, my goal is to uh, get this all cleaned up. Um, it's not terribly dirty, so hopefully that won't take too long. Um, and we're gonna do some testing, plug it in and see if we can make it work. I haven't even plugged it in yet. I, uh, like I said, I bought it because it was so cool looking. So um, we uh, just wanna real quick here, kind of give it a, a little once over and it does turn, um, so that's good. And um, you know, you can see the motor here is all kind of uh, enclosed here, attached to the machine. And um, this tag down here is, it does say 115 to 120 volts, so I know that it is um, great for the US. So, and it also does say 1.3 amps. And uh, that tells me that this motor hopefully is pretty strong. Um, I think my other machines are maybe 0.6 or 0.7. So um, that uh, hopefully will, will be wonderful for maybe some heavy duty sewing or something, I'm not sure. So we'll find out. Um, so I am going to get set up with a couple tools and some, some testing stuff. And we're gonna plug this in, see if she works, if she doesn't. We'll see if we can make her work. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, I am just so excited to take a closer look at this. Um, the first thing I want to do is get this plugged in and see if we have power, see if we have any power issues. And um, I do have a power strip over here that we're going to plug it into uh, just in case there are any issues. Um, it'll trip right here and not uh, hurt anything else in the, in the house. So um, we're just going to plug this in and turn that on. And this does have a little uh, power plug in right here. Um, and there is a cord that is labeled, handily labeled motor here. And I can see that it's plugged into the right uh, plug here. It's the first one in line. Uh, so that looks correct to me. And um, we're going to see if we've got power. We've got a light. So that's cool. And oh, this thing kind of comes open really cool like that. So that's neat. Um, so yeah, good. We're not sparking. We're not smoking or anything like that. So, so that's good news. Um, I am going to try the foot pedal here real quick and see if it'll turn on its own. And ooh, we do not have any action here. Oh, yeah, we do. It is intermittent action. 
That's interesting. It doesn't turn on every single time I press the pedal. So, um, I'm wondering if that's just a lubrication problem. It is a little rough when I turn the wheel. So maybe uh, that intermittent problem will kind of fix itself when I get some oil into this. Um, but that, you know, if, if it is anything more than that, that may point to why it was at the thrift store. So um, we'll have to take a closer look at that. Um, I do kind of want to just go around here though and kind of see what we have here. Um, I think this is really cool how this opens right here. You've got the light in there, and this is the light switch. It looks like looks like that just depresses that, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and in here there is a handy little diagram of how to thread the machine. I like that. Very nice. And looking down in here, um, you know, it is not too dirty. It's a little dusty, but it is not bad. I don't think this machine has been used very much at all. So um, that's awesome. All right. Um, the tension assembly here seems to be working. I can see it's really tight there, really loose there. And the spring's got some good action, so that's good. That's a good start. Um, the bobbin assembly, it does have a bobbin case down in here, so that's good. And I've even got a bobbin with some thread in it, so added bonus. I've got some thread. Um, and this looks super clean down in here. That is just wonderful. Very cool. Okay. Um, we've got feed dogs here, and it looks like there's a high and a low, and they are dropping down properly. So that's good. Reverse button that makes a cool little springy sound when you press it. And our stitch length. That seems to be working well. All right, um, and then we've got our bobbin winder, and that's going up properly. So, um, yeah, I guess with our little intermittent problem of running here, I'm, oh, see, it's not, it's not gonna turn on for me again. With a little help, it'll turn on. So I'm hoping that that's going to fix itself once we uh, get it all oiled and, and lubricated and stuff. Um, this machine looks like this whole top would just kind of flip back up to get inside there, but it does not. That's a paint line. So, um, you know, I can lubricate in here. Oh, and it's this is pretty handy. Uh, they have painted red all of the spots that I need to put oil in there, so that makes that nice and easy. And I do have oil ports uh, along here, so um, that we're just going to use the oil ports to, to get all of that all lubricated up there since we can't get inside here. So um, I think it needs a good cleaning and... and um, lubricated and I'm, I'm hoping it'll take care of that problem. I do want to try this clutch um, and see if it is going to work for us. It, uh, let's see, that's engaged. And we'll see if we can get it to disengage. And it doesn't look like it's disengaged. Well, yeah, it is. It's disengaged now. So you got to get it just right in the right spot. So um, yeah, I'll have to take a closer look at that too and, and see that should disengage a little bit better than that. Um, yeah, okay, good, good. So I'm going to uh, grab a few things and I think we're going to uh, just give this a nice uh, good cleaning. Um, 
mostly outside because there's not a whole lot of the inside that we can get to and uh, get some oil in it. We'll see if it'll be a little bit happier after that. So I'll see you back here in just a minute. Okay, so my plan is to just get this all wiped down uh, really good on the top here. Then I'll flip it over and uh, look at the underside, see how dirty it is uh, there, get it all cleaned up and lubricated. And then we'll uh, come back up to the top side here and get it lubricated as well. So um, I am, to clean the body of this machine, I'm just using a real diluted solution of Simple Green. Um, I don't think that's going to hurt this painted surface here. Um, so I am just going to give it a nice good wipe down. Uh, it's not terribly dirty. There's just a little bit of dust kind of in these little crevices here, but um, it is just not bad at all. Not bad. Looks like I've got my little tag up here with my model number and serial number. And there's also another label up here that says, this machine is equipped with lint cleaner, anti-binding device. I have no idea what that means or what that is, but it sounds really cool. So I'd have to do a little research on that and see what that's all about. Okay, so I just want to take this wheel assembly off here and get it cleaned up and lubricated. See if we can get this clutch uh, to disengage a little better than it was before. And there is a little set screw right here. I'll take that out. It's not terribly dirty. All right, so we've got this little washer here. The tabs are pointing out. So we gotta make a note of that. And then this should slip right off here. Oh, and it is attached to the motor with a belt. So I will have to get this uh, motor cover off here and get that belt off so we can get this wheel off. And 
looks like there's one more screw up here. to loosen these screws so I can take some tension off of this belt, drop this motor down just a fuzz, or yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, there's the belt. Doesn't look like it's in that bad of shape. That's good. Okay, now this wheel's gonna come off. And it's a little dirty. I think it could use a little bit of clean in here. Not too bad though. really no dust or anything on this motor. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, I am going to oil this and kind of just lubricate that all the way around so that wheel will glide on that a little better. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm just going to drop a little bit of oil on the inside of this. Kind of smear it around there. I think that's going to be a lot happier about that. Okay. So we'll get this back on, and it slides on a lot better than it came off, and it is spinning very well now. Look at that. Very nice. Okay. Um, my next step is to get the belt on so we can get this put back together, so I'm going to take this wheel back off and uh, get this right down in that groove. There we go. And I need to get it around this motor here. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do it that way, so I'm going to put it around the motor first and then put the wheel on. We'll see if that's any easier. I don't know if it will be, but we'll find out. There we go. That worked, and I think I need to get this 
motor bolted back down here. So I'm going to pull this down so I've got a little bit of tension here. feels pretty good. Not terribly loose or anything. This motor's on here nice and tight. Good, good. Okay. And we're still spinning. Good, good. Okay. So, get our little washer back on here, tabs pointed out, and we've got the two tabs, 10 and 2, roughly. set screw. Okay, let's see if our clutch is working any better. And it's engaged. engaged. There we go. It's still having a bit of an issue disengaging. There we go. You just have to have it right in the right spot for that to disengage. But it is working and I do have this in the right uh, position here. So that's what I was mostly concerned about. So Okay, um, I think the next thing that we need to do before I get the cover back on the motor is plug it back in and just see if we are going to still have that intermittent power problem uh, when we step on the pedal. So um, let me get it uh, plugged back in here and we'll test it out. Okay, so before we move on, um, something just doesn't seem right. I think I might not have the uh, clutch uh, put together properly. And I think um, just to see if that is true, I'm going to take this off one more time and flip that washer around and just see if that clutch will disengage a little bit better. So um, I just wanna, because I can, I just wanna see if I can make it work a little bit better than it was. So. Um, that's just how we learn. We just keep on trying until it works properly. So I am just going to flip this around, get it back in those notches there, and we'll see if it works a little better this time around. It just didn't seem right to me. Um, you know, I kind of I went through this when I put the 2012 uh, back together. And uh, I, if I remember right, I think I might have had that one in wrong as well. I'm not sure. It just wasn't working right. So um, with as nice and new as this machine is, it tells me that this should be working properly. So it's probably my error. So it is engaged. And now 
it's disengaged and it is truly disengaged so yes clutch engaged clutch disengaged okay moment of truth um i am going to plug this in and we're going to give this a whirl and see if we fixed our issue with uh just getting it all oiled so um let's hope that our intermittent power issue is fixed so light is on i do have power that's good and darn it i was so hopeful it is not coming on properly it only comes on when i spin the wheel uh, when it's in a certain position so and see there it's not uh, engaging again so bummer um that's okay though i have a feeling that's exactly why this ended up at the thrift store so most people uh would just stop there and donate it but um i'm not going to stop there i think i'm going to figure this out so um this to me it's either got to be the pedal uh it's bound up here or there's an issue with the motor so i know it's not i'm pretty sure it's not the pedal um because i you know haven't done anything with it um it uh doesn't seem to have any issues um so i'm going to take this off again and then we'll kind of test the the motor and see if it'll have any issues without this attached and um we'll we'll go from there we'll just continue our diagnosis here so let me get this unplugged here and we'll get this part off once again and do a little test All right. I should probably loosen that up. That might come off a little easier. I think that's going to do the trick. Forgot about that part. Oh, that's much better. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, good, good. All right, wheel is off, belt is off, and I'm going to plug this back in and then give it another shot here. We got power, we got light, that's good. So. Oh, look at that. So that tells me it is the motor. Um, really wasn't looking to uh, take that whole thing off, but it looks like we're gonna have to get that done. So um, let me see if I can make it. Yeah. After it stops, it just needs a little bit of help getting going again. So um, that could point to 
either a dirty commutator or dirty brushes or something of that nature. So I'm going to get set up here, grab a couple more tools, we'll tear into this motor and see what we can find out. All right, so I'm going to take this motor off here and just see if we can figure out what is going on here. So we'll get our two mounting screws off of there and this I believe is the uh, wire going up back to the light uh, so I will get that little thing off hopefully that'll just kind of slip off of there good good all right and doesn't look like I have a lot of slack. Um, maybe, let's see, this is the motor cord. I thought I was going to have enough slack to um, kind of pull this up out of here, but it doesn't look like I do, and I don't know why. Let me see if there's something going on under here that will help me. Oh yeah, of course. All right. Get that set there. Um, it looks like it's being held in right here. So we'll just loosen this and hopefully give us a little slack that we can pull that out. There we go. Okay, well there's our motor. Look at that. All right. Um, So, I think that I need to undo these bolts here to get into here. And I want to be sure I keep this little uh, wire guide, or whatever that's called, um, with that. So, remember to always keep your parts organized if you methodically keep track of them as you take things apart it'll be a lot easier to get everything back together and washers. Seems a little excessive, but I'm sure there was a reason for <laughs> double bolts and double washers. Okay. Now, I'm wondering if this is just going to slip right apart here, and it looks like it might. It's coming apart already here. And note that I have this machine unplugged. I don't do this with it plugged in. That would be a bad choice. Um, 
let's see, why is this not just slipping off here? Oh, okay, there is a little set screw right here that I think is not allowing this to come off. There we go. That's exactly why. Okay, perfect. Now, it seems to be coming apart somewhat. Hmm. Odd smell. What is holding us up here? It's the cord. It's this. I need more slack on this power cord. I don't know what to do with that. I certainly don't want to break it. It looks like it's in like two parts here. I don't know if that like slips out, but I don't know. It's plastic and I definitely don't want to break that. So, okay, so I think I figured this out. Um, I just got a pair of pliers on this uh, plastic thing that was holding the cord in there and gently just kind of eased it out of that hole. And uh, so now we can proceed. Um, and it looks like this is going to just kind of slip right off of here. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's an interesting little dealio there. All right. So now this should come right off, and it does. Good, good. Okay. Ooh, boy. I hope you can see that. You can see this commutator is really dirty. These are the two brushes that uh, go in and touch that commutator, and you can see that black all around that uh, where they come in contact. So that could be our problem. Um, I'd like to get these brushes out um, and clean those and get this commutator out and clean that. To do so, I think I need to take these off and slip that off there. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. We're going to give that a shot. And that's the right size. Good, good. All right. Tiny, tiny bolt and a little tiny washer. Oh, there we go. Okay. from oh that goes right in here okay probably better save that
and a little washer and the long guy is going to slip right out and then this little spacer here we'll get that out of the way as well okay what is happening now um i would like to think that this would just slip right off of that commutator and I can get all this out of the way. But there's a couple little copper wires in here that are holding it down. So um, not sure I want to really pull on that very hard. Um, they do have a little bit of give to them. But, oh, look, I got it up enough to where I can get these brushes out. So I think, I think I can just slide these out maybe. The springs are pushing them out already, but I don't know if they're going to come out any further than that. Ooh, look at that. Boy, there's not a lot left of that. It's mostly spring. But we can uh, dip that in some alcohol and get it cleaned up, and that might help. Let's see if we can get this other one out of here. That one's about the same, a little tiny bit longer than the other one. They are kind of black. Okay. Um. I don't know that I am going to get this part out of here uh, without unhooking some of these little wires and I don't know that I want to do that. Um, so I'm wondering if I can maybe clean the commutator as it sits here. I don't know if that's a possibility but um, gosh, let me take a further look at this and see what are my options here for getting this black stuff cleaned off. So we'll figure that out. All right, so I think I figured out a way to clean off this commutator. Um, I went ahead and put the long bolts back in here with the spacers and the nuts. Um, just because I didn't want to take the chance of uh, breaking any of these small copper wires that are that are uh, wired in. I think there's four of them that are attached here. And I've got it uh, chucked up in my drill here, so I am just going to spin it. Um, I just want to kind of stabilize it though as I spin it, and it I think it kind of will fit right down into here just perfect. Give me a little bit of stabilization here. And I've got some really fine sandpaper, so I am just going to spin this and put my sandpaper on that commutator. Try to clean some of that carbon off of there. And that does look like it's working. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Oh, that's much better. See how much shinier that is? It was just black before. So I think that's going to do the trick for us. So see if we can get this off of here. That's good. Okay. So that is better. Um, I've got the brushes soaking in some 90% alcohol here and uh, hopefully that'll make those guys a little bit happier, get the carbon cleaned off of those. Um, basically this is going to go back together just in the reverse order that it all came apart. So I'm going to, um, first I'm going to get these uh, brushes all 
wiped off here real quick. Make sure that they are good to go before I proceed. Yeah, they were dirty. I've got some black stuff coming off of the on the paper towels. So, okay, um, I am going to work on getting all of this back together, and then uh, once I get the all the motor parts and everything all buttoned up, we're going to give it another test and see if it is going to run any better than it was before. So, wish me luck. All right, moment of truth. We got everything put back together and now we're gonna plug it in and test it and see if we have fixed our issue. So light came on, that's good news. And we'll just hit the pedal here. And it looks like we may have fixed it. That is wonderful. It does sound like it is not only smoother, but maybe even faster. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, ideally, I wanted to uh, be able to sew something real quickly, like a quick quilt block or something on this after we got it running, but um, I didn't anticipate having to tear into the motor and all that stuff. So it took a little bit longer uh, than anticipated, but um, I do have plans for this machine. We are going to sew something on this very soon. So I hope to bring you along for that. I have a lot of other machines I want to show you and a lot of projects that I want to make with you as well. So um, I hope you stick around for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.